All right, in this little bit of, little lecture, we're going to be talking about some of the origins of psychology. Um, in some of your textbooks, they talk about some of the early, early origins of psychology, uh, going back to the Greek times, going back to Socrates, uh, in, or and going back to the philosophers, which came in the 16th centuries, in the 17th centuries, in the 18th centuries. We're not really going to talk about those. We're going to be talking mostly about the... Um, the origins of modern psychology. Uh, and we could say that this started uh, back in the end of the 1800s, the late 19th century. The first uh, father of modern psychology, the man who gets that title, is a fellow named Wilhelm Wundt, who in 1887 um, founded the first psychological laboratory in Leipzig, Germany. Uh, he was actually a physiologist prior to that, uh, and but he decided he was going to look into the nature of consciousness himself. That the idea of what is going on in the brain, in and and to understand what it was. Now, like all uh, budding scientists of that era, the goal was to make uh, to make the psychology a real, true science, a hard science, a science that uh, would live up to its name. Uh, so he was looking at a way of classifying the conscious experience in a scientific manner. And his goal was to figure out what the elements of consciousness was, what the elements of conscious experience are. Sort of like the, the, a, a periodic type table of elements of the consciousness. And uh, in other words, he was looking for the structure of our conscious experience. And that's where he got this very important name called structuralism. Structuralism means he was looking for the structure of our psyche. Sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, and this is actually what he was trying to do. Now, how do you go about doing such a thing? It's very important. Uh, how did he do that? He did something which he called a system, which he called introspection. Looking inside yourself, in, like inspect spectacles having to do a C intro looking in. He took and he trained participants, research participants with his own system to report the uh, what the content of their subjective experience was in order to break it down to its basic elements. Uh, he would give them a task, uh, describe a pencil, read a book, look at a color, and tell me Report to me, using introspection, looking into yourself, what it was that you were going to do. What, was, not, what it was that made up what you are experiencing. What are the elements of what you were experiencing? Um, and uh, it was, uh, this, this defined what, this, uh, what the structures were. Now, there was a problem, of course, with this because, uh, you know, it might not be the same from one person to the other. I mean, if you're going to like say, uh, say, what are the elements of your experience of a chocolate cake or of chopped liver or whatever it is that you happen to be experiencing, it, uh, is your experience going to be the same thing as my experience, is the same thing as his experience? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily at all. And this made it for, for a very, very difficult problem, uh, in, especially in his goal of being scientific. Um, it, was, it was not... Uh, a well, it, because of its subjectiveness, it made for a lot of difficulties. Uh, now, um, on the other hand, Wood did find out something very interesting. Because he was talking about people's experience and reporting of experience, he found something that it actually, that if a person was going to react to an experience, it would take less time than if he was going to report the experience. In other words, the perception itself was faster than the reporting of their perception. And this actually remained in psychology for a long time. It remained as one of the major uh, mainstays of cognitive psychology. Now, he had a student, a fellow came from England to Ger Leipzig, Germany, learned under Wundt, and that man, whose name was Edward Titchener, Took, he was a student of, of Wundt in Leipzig, and he, when he graduated there, uh, he took his uh, studies, he took his, his practice or whatever, and he, took, and he went to Cornell University in the United States, and he brought that scientific uh, psychology 
to the United States in Cornell University. And he was probably the most famous of the uh, structuralists. Uh, and um, he, he ca categorized thousands or tens of thousands of different uh, sensations. Uh, now, he, it, even though it was trying to be scientific, it really had a couple of problems, okay? And s the, the first problem was that, again, it was subjective. Uh, how do you actually come to a well-defined measurement of something which is going on in the brain, uh, especially before fMRIs or before there was, this is talking about the 1880s or the early 1900s. There was no way of looking at what actually goes on in the brain. Um, and even though today we actually know, like for instance, taste, we're talking about taste. Uh, there are six basic tastes. Great, uh, uh, great um, uh, chefs might actually combine the, these particular tastes, you know, the salty and the, uh, uh, and the sweet and the bitter and the umami and all the different tastes that we had, the, the six different basic tastes, and they combine them a little bit more of this, a little bit, but the regular guy doesn't, doesn't experience things that way. You know, you can, it's very difficult to tell the difference or to describe the difference between one type of chocolate and another. Uh, so it became very difficult. Also, Titchener, although he was very prolific and very uh, uh, influential, he was not, he was so convinced of his system that he wasn't flexible to accept changes. And that was a, a big problem. Uh, and um, then became the uh, attacks on this school, especially from the behaviorists who we will see in uh, one of the upcoming chapters.